Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Module 1 EKG Basics, part of our EKG Fundamental series. Uh, with this series, just to give a quick introduction, I hope that um, it provides you guys with a fundamental understanding of how EKGs work, uh, how we can interpret it, and really um, give you a chance to practice your EKG skills, um, eventually being able to use it on the wards or the clinics. So why don't we go ahead and get started. So these are the learning objectives for this video. We're gonna be able to describe the basic electrical conducting system of the heart as well as the normal pathway of depolarization. Uh, we're gonna be able to understand how electrodes can be used to measure current and how various placement of electrodes provide us with different views of the heart. Finally, we'll be able to recognize the basic anatomy of the EKG strip, what a P is, what a QRS is, and what a T is, and how they are significant. All right, you may recall from your physiology class what the normal conducting system of the heart is. Uh, it starts up here in the right atrium with the SA node. Uh, signals go down to the AV node, the atrioventricular node here, um, down the bundle of Hiss, eventually bifurcating into the left and right bundle branches. The uh, left bundle branch has um, two additional branches that it uh, breaks up into be before it becomes Purkinje fibers. But for the simplicity of this video and just to get the basic understanding of EKGs, we'll just say that the, the right and left bundle branches eventually break up into Purkinje fibers. So let's review that. SA node to AB node to the bundle of Hiss to the right and left bundle branches, eventually to Purkinje fibers. So uh, this is this, how signal is transmitted. What is that signal? Well, it's in the form of action potentials. And you may recall from your physiology class what uh, the action potential looks like, specifically for cardiac muscles. Um, I drew it here on the screen. Um, we can break this down even further. So this portion um, represents depolarization, meaning the the influx of uh, positively charged ions, specifically sodium and calcium, um, resulting in electropositivity of the cell. Uh, the the rest of this uh, diagram represents repolarization. So this is when potassium primarily leaves the cell, resulting in um, increasing electronegativity of the cell. So that's your basic action potential. Okay, so we have this current of positivity or this depolarization uh, that's traveling down this pathway all the way from the SA node to the Purkinje fibers. Um, let's try to understand how that's related to EKGs. So let's say I placed electrodes around the heart. Uh, I'll put a positive electrode here and a negative electrode here. Um, these electrodes, when you place two of them, they create something called a lead. And a lead allows us to essentially look at or view the um, electrical flow through the heart. Um, in, the, in the lead that I drew on the screen, you can see that it's in this direction. So what you can imagine is you are standing here at where, it's, where the uh, positive sign is. Um, you got your eyes here, your eyelashes sticking out of your eyes. Um, excuse my drawing, by the way. Um, and then you're looking straight at the heart this way. And what you are doing is you are looking at the electrical flow or the current standing in that position. So that's what this lead allows us to do. So if we did stand here, what would we see? Well, this is where we could start forming our anatomy of the EKG. You would first see depolarization of the atrium. This would result in a positive bump on our computer, eventually going down the, the AV node and then the bundle of Hiss, you have depolarization of the ventricles. So this is a little bit complicated in its appearance, but in general it looks like this. So after depolarization of the ventricles, the ventricles do have to repolarize, and repolarizing meaning the cells become more electronegative. If the cells becoming electronegative, um, and it's important to keep in mind that the, the repolarization happens in the opposite direction. So it's going back generally towards the negative side. So we have negative charges moving towards the negative side. This as well is going to give us a positive bump. 
So let's review that. So uh, with atrial depolarization and ventricular depolarization, we had um, cells becoming more electropositive. Um, and that um, that's occurring going towards the positive electrode. This gives us a positive spike and generally a positive spike with this ventricular complex right here. Um, as far as ventricular repolarization goes, we had um, negativity moving towards the negative side, and this also gives us a positive spike. So what do we call all these? Well, this first, this, this first um, bump right here is called a P wave. Second one spike right here is called a QRS complex. This last one right here is called a T wave. Let's review that. The P wave represents atrial depolarization, the QRS represents ventricular depolarization, and the T wave represents uh, ventricular repolarization. The QRS complex we can uh, break down even further. So the first, the, the first upward that you see, which is this part in this case, um, is called the R wave. If there's a downward slope before the R wave, that's called a Q wave. And if there's a downward, downward slope after the R wave, it's called an S wave. And that's how we get the name QRS. Um, you won't always see all three of those. Sometimes you'll just see an RS. Sometimes you'll see an RS R prime, such as in this example, where we have a second up, upward um, trend. Um, but in general, uh, we call this the QRS complex. Okay, and then this is just another drawing of the lead that I described. So we actually do use this lead uh, in practice. This is called lead two. And again, just to re reiterate the point, um, it gives us a view of the heart if we were to stand right here and look at the electrical current this way. So this is helpful, but the heart has a lot of angles and we really wanna understand the heart completely. Um, so what can we do? Well. We can use different leads, right? So let, let me use this example to kind of um, help you understand the, the point of why we have different leads and why they're important. So imagine that there is a car crash in the street. I'll draw the car out here, and then there's smoke coming out of the car. No one got hurt, luckily, but there is a car crash. Um, and we have several pedestrians just standing around the car, looking at the car, seeing what's going on all around. Each of these pedestrians have a specific view of the car, right? They, they don't see the whole crash or the whole um, event happening. They only see part of it. And they all see a unique, different part of it. But if we went and spoke with all of these uh, pedestrians and kind of put together all of their pictures, then we get a full picture of what happened in the car crash. This is essentially what we are doing with uh, EKGs um, and the different leads. You can think of each lead as a different pedestrian looking at the car crash from a different angle. All right, so this uh, diagram might be a little bit intimidating right now, um, but it is important and you will see it again. So hopefully um, you will ease into it as these videos go on. Um, this diagram um, shows us all of the major leads um, we see in our EKG paper. We talked about lead two already, um, which shows us kind of the bottom part of the heart since we're looking up here at this portion. Um, but there's also lead three uh, and AVF also showing us the bottom portion from slightly different angles. Uh, we have lead one over here showing us kind of the lateral or the left side of the heart. And then AVR showing us the right side of the heart. So you can imagine how all of these different leads help us see the heart from all of these different angles. Um, I do also want to mention um, the leads that are noted V1 all the way to V6. Uh, these are called precordial leads and they essentially show us the front of the heart. So you can imagine you are standing right in front of the patient looking at their heart um, directly that way, perpendicular to all of these other blue leads here. Um, and you're getting a nice view of the front of the heart and what's going on in the anterior part of the heart. So keep that in mind as we um, look at EKG papers. All right, and the moment has finally come. We're looking at our first EKG paper, 
why don't you take a moment, pause the uh, pause the video, and try to identify any P waves, uh, the QRS complexes, and T waves you might see in any of these leads. Okay, so right off the bat, you notice that there are several leads uh, represented on this um, EKG paper. Uh, lead 1, 2, 3, ABR, ABL, ABF, and then V1 all the way to V6. And we talked about what each of these kind of tell us about the heart. Um, and you can see that the complexes look very different and um, very unique in each one of these leads. And that is because they are showing us different um, the same hearts from different angles and different views. Um, so let's dive in and see if we could find any P's, QRS's, and T's. I'm going to dive right into AVL. Okay, so AVL, um, the P waves are there. They're a little bit tinier, but you can see little bumps right there, right there, right there. These are followed by QRS complexes right here, right here, and right here. And then finally, these T waves right here and right here. Um, the T waves do look a little bit funny, but they are there. Uh, and by funny, I mean um, almost downward, but almost biphasic too, like this. Um, let's look at another example. So we can look at lead two. Um, there's two lead twos here. Um, we have um, this portion right here and then the longer portion of lead two. Uh, they represent the same thing. Um, it's only the, the the bottom one is for a longer period of time. The computer um, interpreted lead two for. So let's see. Uh, we got some P waves here, some here, some here too, and then these are followed by QRS complexes here, here, and here. And then there are T waves right there, right there, and right there. Okay, so that was our first EKG. Okay, so some takeaway points. So the heart conducts all the way from the SA node, the sinoatrial nodes, down to the Purkinje fibers. Um, the current of depolarization and repolarization can be measured using electrodes. Remember that two electrodes make one lead, but we have, um, usually we have 12 different leads showing us the heart. And because we have various leads, um, we have we're looking at the heart from different angles and perspectives and getting a really full overall picture of what's going on in the heart as far as electrical activity goes. All right, that concludes video one. Um, hope you guys stick around for video two on determining rate. Have a nice day.